Well, good morning or Shandobre. Thank you very much for allowing me to be part of your Sunday morning this morning. I'm at a place called Vesterplatz, which is uh, a Gdansk. It's the site uh, of the beginnings of the Second World War. As some might remember, Adolf Hitler was allowed to annex Austria and, part and Czechoslovakia, but when he came to attack Poland, uh, the Allies drew a line there and that commenced uh, the Second World War. The Polish resistance uh, forces here stood out against the uh, Nazi onslaught well beyond anything that the Germans expected. And you can still, uh, on the road up to this great memorial, you can still see the holes from where the shells landed and uh, uh, marks from the bullets. It's, it's still a part of the Second World War history here. I'm going to read a couple of verses in the book of Revelation, uh, which uh, deals, as many of us know, with uh, war and catastrophe and disaster. Judgment, in fact, that God in a day in the future is about to pour out upon a world that has rejected the Lord Jesus. I'm reading in Revelation 6, verse number 1. Now I watched when the Lamb opened one of the seven seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures say with a loud voice like thunder, Come! And I looked, and behold, a white horse, and its rider had a bow, and a crown was given to him, and he came out to conquer uh, and uh, conquering. And when he opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature say, Come, and out came another horse, bright red, its rider was permitted to take peace from the earth, so that people should slay one another. And he was given a great sword. And at the end of that chapter, uh, we read in verse number 17, For the great day of their wrath has come, and who can stand? And we do look to God to bless his word to us this morning. Those are sobering words. It's the beginning uh, of the many judgments that are poured out upon the world in the book of Revelation. If you can imagine the whole of 20th century history, uh, the uh, 50 to 70 million people that were killed in Second World War, the 20 to 30 million that died in the First World War, the 100 million that died over the past century in the various communist revolutions in Russia and in China. Add to that the a holocaust uh, of the six million Jews and the ethnic cleansings that we've seen in our own recent times uh, in Central Europe and in, uh, in Central Africa. Add to that the AIDS epidemic, the uh, pandemic of COVID and the many other catastrophes that the 20th century has opened itself up to. Imagine all of that compressed into seven short years and you get a kind of a sense of the kind of a judgment that is uh, prophesied in the book of Revelation. One of the fascinating things in chapter 6 of Revelation uh, is this, that these judgments are introduced by four creatures that you find in the throne room of God in the previous chapter. And one of those creatures is the lion and he introduces uh, the first of the great judgments which is this uh, uh, rider on a white horse and it seems you see that in Revelation 5 and 6 that uh, we have the flip side of who God is that in Revelation 5 we find that God is uh, the lion uh, he is the righteous king that ought to uh, be the ruler of this world and yet he's rejected and so instead of a king uh, they get a dictator in Revelation chapter number six you'll find too that in Revelation 5 God reveals himself uh, as a sacrificial uh, servant creature he's the one who gave his son Jesus Christ to die for us in the cross but when you come into this chapter you don't have a servant and you don't have a sacrifice but you've got the slaughter of the red horse with or the red, rider on the red horse with uh, his sword and instead of the grace and the kindness of God that you find in Revelation chapter number Number five, as uh, he presents himself as uh, in in the picture of humanity, in the picture of a Lord Jesus, and instead of a God who 
elevates humanity as high as it is possible to go. A God who is able to open the door into heaven. A God who is able to lift man up almost to soar uh, as an eagle. We find that in this terrible chapter uh, of Revelation, chapter number 6, that in fact man is, is uh, subject to a rider who brings them into the depths of hell. You see, in these opening chapters of this great book, we have the heads and the tails of who God is. We have a choice that we make. It's very much like the choice that we find in the book of Joshua. Choose this day whom you shall serve. Uh, do you choose God uh, or do you choose the false gods? It's very much like that choice that was presented in, Eli in Elijah's day as well with Baal. Another choice, choose you this day whom you shall serve. Do you serve the Lord God or do you serve Baal? We've got to make that choice. And at the beginnings of the book of Revelation, we're presented with this choice yet again. Are we going to receive God for who he truly is? Are we prepared to receive God for what he offers in grace and loving kindness in the sacrifice of his son? Or do we reject the God of heaven, choose our own way, uh, make our own decisions, choose the sin and the rebellion? and the rejection and exclude God from our lives. And if we do, the terrible prophecies of the book of Revelation is that there is this flip side to the God of loving grace. He's also the God of uh, immeasurable judgment and justice. And so uh, we have then a great choice to make. The same choice, of course, that the Lord Jesus Christ presents us with constantly through the Gospels. A choice of of accepting him or rejecting him. He who hath the Son hath life. But if we don't know the Son, we don't have life, and the anger, the wrath of God, abides upon us. It's the same choice that uh, uh, Pontius Pilate, you remember, was left with, and he made the wrong choice. It was also the same choice in many ways as the two thieves on the cross on either side of the Lord Jesus Christ had to make. Uh, a choice either uh, to... Uh, ask the Saviour, remember me when you come into your kingdom, or that choice that rejected the Lord Jesus Christ and railed upon him, hated and rejected him. Uh, the choice that we make now, the Word of God tells us, affects us not just in our life now, but it affects us forever. Uh, a word that the Bible uses, eternal or eternity, it has eternal repercussions, the choice that we make even today. For what is at stake is eternal life. The wages of sin is death, the Apostle tells us in the book of Romans, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our God. What a tremendous gift and what a tremendous choice. Thanks very much for being with me this morning at a very wet and cold Vesterplatte in Gdansk in northern Poland. Thank you.